Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and I have a honey-do list item that I'm sure many of you have had to deal with, and that is replacing a towel bar that has come off the wall. Now, uh, typically this is because you're using anchors on one or more of the brackets, and over time they have just kind of gotten a little jiggly, and it makes it really easy for this to fall off. I have the worst scenario where I don't have a stud behind either one of these. The only stud in this wall is dead smack in the middle, so it can't be used for anything, at least this style. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna build a whole new style of towel shelf. Uh, it's gonna be center supported, so we're gonna have a beam right here in the middle that holds everything. We're gonna have three shelves, and then the bottom one is gonna have hooks on it so you can hook on towels at the bottom too. And then there'll also be a shelf for your cell phone or your rings, watch, stuff like that before you get into the shower. So it's gonna be a really, really easy build today on Bittner Build. Before we start building our shelf, we obviously need to measure our space and we need to get a good lay of the land because that really will influence our design process, right? So uh, the first thing we're doing is we're taking a stud finder and we are finding our stud. And you can see those lights lighting up right where that tape is. I placed that piece of painter's tape there because now I don't have to measure again. I don't have to use the stud finder again. I know exactly where it's at and it's a good visual representation right now when we're doing this design process. So as I descend into this little itty bitty closet that's right here, you'll see that I have to contend with this door. So I obviously can't put the, the shelf going this way any more than this door, which means my stud is actually off center again. I can't win with this, right? Uh, so there's very little chance of making something that's symmetrical, something that you know perfectly fits in the middle of the space that has equal amounts of space on both sides. Uh, to make it symmetrical. We're gonna embrace the asymmetry and we're gonna kind of maybe take the shelf way this way. Um, we're gonna do more of a creative design and hopefully that creative design when we're all done will look really good in the space. So all I have to do now is measure the width and we can go start building. All right, so here's my plan design. I will have all of my cut sheet items at the end of the video, both in Imperial and Metric. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm lining up the shelves on the right side and then I'm having them stagger get longer on the left side and that's because where my stud is and where this piece is going to have to go on the back it's going to be somewhere around here. Um, so the fact that it is off center I wanted to take your vision away from that and show there's even more things going off center in that direction. So I think this is going to work out pretty well. We are using some thicker stock material. This wood is uh, just a little bit over an inch thick. And I did that because we are going to use dados and grooves to attach these together. And I wanted more surface area as well as this just to be a little bit uh, more beefy from a visual look. I also think I'm going to add a miter cut to the front corners over here. Uh, just because when my wife's getting out of the shower, I don't want her to scraping her uh, shoulder on the side of this thing. So we're going to just make sure that we safely taper that side as well. The main construction point in this build is to cut your dados and your grooves. You can do this at a router table or with a palm router. Uh, you can also easily do this at a table saw. If you have a dado stack, you can utilize that. Um, my poor, poor friends over in Europe uh, they are not allowed to have dado stacks over there, so I'm going to do it the hard way and I'm just going to use a single uh, blade on my table saw. Now, I wanted to talk about safety for a second, and you should not be utilizing your fence to do this cut. The reason being is this is a long, skinny piece of wood, and so this is really easy to rack, which is to twist this wood. So you might start sliding it along your fence, but if it twists at all, and it's really easy the longer it gets, uh, you will bind and it will cause kickback or it could draw you into the blade. A whole bunch of bad stuff that you don't want to have happen. So do not use your fence for this. You should utilize your miter uh, gauge. This typically comes with every table saw, so you should have one of these. This allows you to move the wood through the blade at a perpendicular line without having it touch anything else that it could bind on. The other thing that you could definitely use, which is what I'm going to use, is my crosscut sled. Um, both of these are great options for this. Do it the safe way. Don't try and use your fence for this. 
The material that I'm using for everything is one inch thick. And so what we're gonna do is for both the shelves and the backer board, we're going to set it up to half that thickness. So in my case, that is going to be one half inch. I'm gonna place a setup block at the saw, move it down until I'm just kissing the top. That's good there. And we're ready to rock. Now, on my board, I have placed two marks, one here and here. So this is the area that I'm going to hog out. I'm even gonna just make a little squiggly line in there just to say that's where we're gonna remove stuff. Uh, what I can do, which is really nice about this, is it's gonna be the exact same cut for all three boards. So I'm gonna run this once, take it away, and put the next board down. Run that once, take it away, put the next one down. That way I have the exact same perfect cut because I haven't moved my stop block. Once I've done one cut on the right, I'm then gonna move my stop block and I'll do the one cut on the left side for all three shelves. And then I can just willy nilly hog out the rest of the middle between all of them. I don't have to pay attention to measurements at that point. It's just all about getting rid of that material. This is the right cut on all three shelves and the left cut on all three shelves. And now I'm hogging out the material in between on all three shelves. Now you don't have to get 100% of everything. It's always that fun, satisfying little chip away event there. Now what we need to do is take a chisel to what remains on here. You know, there's some small little lines and stuff. We just want to smooth that out. We don't really want to take away a lot more material. We just want to make sure that it's perfectly flat across the bottom. All right, the hogging out on this shelf is all done and I want to dry fit it and it doesn't fit. Um, it's just a hair too small. That's the good thing. Uh, too big would be bad, it would be loose. So we can just make another cut here. Uh, since I'm doing the exact same cut on all three, I wanna make sure I use my stop block. I'm gonna set it up like half a human hair width over. Cut it again. Once I make sure that I have the right cut, I'm gonna run the other two shelves through this as well. I've dry fit all of my shelves. Everything fits great now. So we need to cut the dado into the back plate. So with all of these laid out, I have two inches at the bottom, seven between each of the shelves and two inches at the top. What I can do now is just come on the side and make a little mark at the bottom and the top of each of the shelves. And that's gonna tell me where I need to cut my dados into this backboard. For doing my dados on the back plate, we're doing it the exact same way. I don't need to change the height of the blade or anything. What I'm gonna do is do the right and left cut for each of the shelves first, and then I'll just go back and hog out the middle. Okay, we are all cut and it is super easy to dry fit and make sure everything looks great. It'll slide right in. That is a lot of surface area for glue. Uh, so this is gonna be a pretty strong glue up. Uh, I am now gonna do a completely optional thing. You definitely don't have to do this. You could keep it just like this. At this point, you could just sand, stain, and glue. Um, but I am going to take this over to the miter saw and on each one of the shelves. I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this corner and that's because I'm really close to my shower right here and I can just see my wife or I coming out of the shower scraping our shoulder right here on this corner and I don't want that. So uh, I'm gonna take this extra step but it's definitely not something that you have to do. Decided to make my cut at 22 and a half degrees, two inches from the front of the shelf. We're all cut. We need to sand now. I'm gonna try and keep all of my edges squared for the most part. I'm only gonna lightly go over them because I wanna keep this angular look with this uh, shelving unit. Make sure you are wearing your PPE. You have your sander hooked up to some form of dust collection. I have a air purifier right above my head too because this is where I do my sanding. I've had lung issues this year. Make sure you take this type of stuff seriously. All right, let's glue this up. This should be all that you need. You shouldn't need to add any screws. Make sure that when you're doing your glue up, not only do you glue here, but you also glue on the two sides as well as in your groove and on the sides of the groove before you insert your shelf. Um, if you do want to put screws in here, I mean, you can. Uh, just make sure that you do a countersink bit on the back. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and glue it and clamp it up. 
I have it on my parallel clamps. I like doing this method just because the parallel clamps are flat, so everything's just sitting on here. Once I have everything glued, I can just drop them down uh, without it being like a rocky mess trying to balance everything. For mounting this to the wall, I'm gonna put two screws directly in the back plate into that one stud that I have. Uh, but I'm gonna make a recessed pocket for them. I'm gonna use a half inch Forstner bit and I'm going to drill this on my marks on here uh, to where the head disappears. That gives me enough depth to where I can put in a half inch button plug. It's these little mushroom looking guys. Uh, and it also accommodates for the depth for a screw head to be in here as well. I can then put the button head on and it will conceal our hole. Uh, I have a pine build here because I was told by my wife that I am painting this white. That is what she wanted. Uh, so uh, for me, I'm going to paint these button caps too. But if you did this as a hardwood, nice project that you're just gonna go ahead and seal, make sure you do that, especially if it's going into a bathroom because there will be moisture in this environment. You have to make sure that there's some good coverings on here. So while the paint is drying on this, you might've noticed that I changed aprons midway through the video. Um, a lot of people ask me to link over the apron that I use all the time. So I'm actually unhappy with that one now and I'm looking for a new one. So over the course of like the next month or two, I'm gonna buy a whole bunch of aprons. Some are being sent to me for free, just uh, non-sponsored stuff, just send it out to me. Um, so I'll kind of go over each one of these. I'm not gonna say if it's good or bad specifically because everybody has a different need in their aprons. Uh, you might like the layout different than I do. Uh, you might have a different physical physique than I do uh, as far as how this thing will fit. So I'm just gonna kind of give it a quick, you know, 20 second review or overview real quick. So uh, this is a thicker, heavier duty material than my typical apron that I wear. It has thicker straps, thicker uh, pads, and even a thicker crisscross right here. Uh, it has a very similar top layout. So it has two pen holders, a bigger pocket at the top. You can fit a whole notepad in here. Uh, and it has a zipper pocket as well that can fit a whole cell phone up at the top. Two very large hand pockets that are comfortable. Uh, the zipper pockets in the front, the, the Velcro is really strong. That might be a positive or a negative for you, depending on who you are. You can fit quite a bit in there. Metal loop on the side for a hammer or a tape measure. Fabric loop. This one has two loops up at the top. Uh, my usual one only has one. So I always keep my remote on here, but I never could keep glasses with it because the two would click together and make a whole bunch of noise. Um, we're pretty good, they're separated now that there are two of these. So that's pretty cool as well. The only thing I would note as far as a fit goes for my body type, I'm getting a little bit of a bunching in the front. Um, and that's because my shoulders are making the straps come together like this. Uh, so if you have a different body type, it might be pulling out the other way. That's why I'm saying every apron is different for every person. So just wanted to note that. Um, I'll have it linked down below if you're interested in taking a look at it. Let's go ahead and mount that shelf. All right, we're all finished and mounted. I think it looks pretty good for my space. Uh, if this design isn't your thing, that's okay. The main focus was showing you how you could do a center supported pillar that then holds up some other solution right here. So if you have a similar issue in your bathroom or space where you only have one stud to be able to connect into, this is the type of build that you could utilize for a design that you come up with. Uh, also, just to point out too, remember we have these recessed holes. I have these painted buttons that go right here, a button cap, just snap that in and it stays. And again, it's hidden behind my towel, so it's not like you're gonna ever see it either. Uh, you know, we have space for decorations, for my cell phone, for my wife's rings and stuff. And then I put three sets of hooks underneath, can hang your clothes that you're gonna get into after the shower, some additional towels, stuff like that. So, um, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with it. I will put the cut sheet in a moment on the screen, both in Imperial and Metric, if you're looking to copy this type of design. And I hope that you got some good information from this video. If you did, I hope you'll like and subscribe. That's really what helps me grow the channel. And as always, stay safe in the shop. I'll see you in the next one.